Good. It's two minutes after seven. Um, we'll get started. Um, okay, well, welcome to our meeting. This is the first meeting of the month, which is our business meeting. And um, the first point on the agenda is the public comment se section, um, in which we invite you to tell us anything you have on your mind, but we ask you to keep it to um, five minutes. Um, and then we'll have the business part of the meeting where we will discuss issues and things to, that we need to approve and so forth. And if you have any questions about anything that comes up during the meeting, please feel free to speak to any of the school board members afterward. Um, and then we will uh, adjourn into executive session um, to consider questions about personnel and, and students and, and so forth and personal issues. And then we will reconvene to uh, move Make, uh, to vote on anything that comes up in an executive session that requires a vote. Um, and you're welcome to come back for that part of the meeting as well. So um, without any further ado, um, is there anyone that would like to speak to us? Okay. okay the first point, the first point on the agenda is reports. We have one from Building and Grounds. As, as you, I guess, Chris, you're the only one that isn't on the committee who's here, so um, both uh, Rachel and I are building the sure. committee. Sure. Sorry, I'll we get out. <laughs> okay, Harry. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, we're in the middle of a capital project, and um, we've hired a, a, a architectural firm, and um, we've had some meetings with them, and they've you know, gone through the school and looked over. We have a list of things that we want them to do, and um, they found some other things that they suggested we consider. Um, we probably won't be doing them this time around, but we might put them on the list for the future. Um, we were planning on a $5 million project. Um, they came up with $20 million of repairs that need to be done and upgrades. Um, they gave very conservative estimates um, and we're in the process of reviewing them and seeing if there's other ways we can go about doing them uh, that might be cheaper. For example, there's some issues on the roof, and their estimate was to do the whole, reface the whole roof, but you can apparently do some x-rays um, of the roof, and um, you can um, find spots that have leaked and then just repair those spots rather than do the whole roof. And so there's a, a lot of, so we're, we're really in the early stages of refining the, the list and um, we will certainly, uh, we've asked Gary to uh, come, Gary May to come in, in September and give us a kind of a more detailed update as to what, what's on the list at this point, what we're considering and uh, other ideas that we might have for different things and uh, um, hopefully by later this fall um, we'll be able to approve the final um, capital project that we can then put before the voters. Anything to add? Rachel? <laughs> yeah. We'll have more information on that in a couple of weeks because they're going to, we're going to have another meeting and they're going to come back with some slight revisions. And there were some things that we could get possible funding for in a different way other than the capital project. So. Twenty thousand cut down to some of the to be for from some other funds. All right. So, so we're a work in progress. And um, any questions? No, not really. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. Um, vision. Could you all come up to the table, maybe? So, I'm going to stand by us. Oh, oh. I think we're going to take turns. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll start. Okay. Oh, they're not coming for it. <laughs> oh, we want us all there at the same time? Sure. Oh, okay. or, or at the yeah. table. Let's do it. Okay. Let's, Let's go. Let's just get close. <laughs> okay. I'll go into a little full screen now. Okay. So um, this is just a small representation of the many volunteers who've been working on the vision process for our school district. Uh, I've 
been co-chairing with Rachel Mason, who's not here today. She is. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rachel. Um, and uh, we've been working hard and felt like we were at a juncture where we wanted to uh, present where we stood in the process and um, you know, give the board a chance to weigh in as, as a unit, uh, as well as you know, anyone in the public who wants to understand a little more about where we're at. So I'm going to pass it to Debbie, who's been a great facilitator through the process. Um, and help us tremendously steer the boat. So in the summer of last year, in August, the board determined that it was time to take a look at the vision of the district and the mission and the values. And we, at that point in time, um, brought a committee together and the committee decided the first act would be to do a broad-based community survey which we did in the fall and winter of last year the survey included three questions the questions are here as a reminder to everybody and I think what was important about what the vision coalition did with the survey was not only make it available a paper and online but members of the vision coalition were also at a lot of events throughout the fall and winter with a table, with offering people the opportunity for dialogue and to take the survey. We also did a QR code for the survey, which was very helpful when we um, had winter break and all of our college seniors or, or college graduates were back because we could just hand them the QR code and they could just scan it on their phones and that was a very easy way to get their data. We also surveyed the students in grades five through 12. So, um, and the last piece was members of the coalition went out to area businesses and had direct conversations about the survey questions with area businesses. So we tried to capture as many individuals and information as we could. We compiled all of that for those three and in March we had presented that information to the board. But here's just a summary of one of the questions that really helps provide some of the foundation for the work that the subgroups of vision, mission, and values have done. When we asked the question about qualities and skills that our graduates need, they really came, uh, the responses came back into five categories. Life skills, meaning can you balance your checkbook? Do you understand about how a credit card works? How a car loan works? Some of those very practical, functional things. Communication skills, both written and verbal. Um, as well as presentation skills, collaboration, how well do you work together with others, which is a key component of today's work world. Problem solving skills, how do you take the information and skills that you have and apply it to novel situations. And then responsibility and accountability. How do you as an individual make sure the way you are acting and moving in the world is a way that is helpful and growth producing and positive. So those were the five general areas that the responses came back with. The other two questions around what are we already doing well and what could we improve become some of the tactical pieces, if you will, that um, will help frame some of the actions that the board may choose to take. And again, we shared all that with you in March. And, and then in June, talked about it a little bit more when they're together. So what I'd like to do now is just share with you information about vision, mission, or value and we present this information in definition terms so that we all have the same foundation for looking at the work that we're doing so a value is a foundational belief the way in which we act every day the way in which we conduct ourselves the mission is what we do every day what is our purpose what is our reason for being and a vision is where do we want to be how do we become and grow into that next picture that we all agree is important for our district. Using these definitions, we took our vision coalition committee and broke up into three subgroups, a vision, a mission, and a value subgroup. Those subgroups have been doing work on their own. And what we're going to do right now is share with you from representatives of each of the group the concept work that has been done. This is in no way a finished product. It is our work as of Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, August 8th. Just so I'd like to offer um, the vision concept, and Mary Ellen is going to present that for us. 
I'm going to stand here and be creepy, but yes, so what's going on with this slide? Um, is it just like this? It's just how you have, there you go. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, so we have a little graphic there. I see how the thing Oh, I don't know where that one thing went. It's, you know what? I don't know why it's not. Nope, it's not there. I don't know where your graphic went. Okay, well, imagine all kinds of hands. Yes, it's all kinds of hands. Or is that middle block? Um, so uh, the vision subcommittee consists of Rachel and Debbie and myself, and um, we we were looking. You know, one thing we did was look at lots of other schools' vision statements, and a lot of them were just a lot of like big words and vague like terminology that like doesn't really mean a lot ultimately and we wanted to come up with something that was specific to our district and what you know what we specifically want to be what we think we are special uh, what makes us special so um, if you click on the concept we we just happened to be looking at um, a, a district that had a was working on a website um, Debbie met them at a conference in Tennessee, and uh, I really was struck by, you know, just how, you know, forward, very upfront their their presentation was. Rebuild, retool, restore, and thought, you know, do we really have to have a a full sentence that nobody's really going to pay that much attention to, or could we condense it? So that's why we ultimately chose these three, I guess you'd call them terms. Um, and this is our, our, like the foundation to our vision, which is every learner together, world ready. And then, you know, with those terms, we have sort of uh, fleshed out what we mean by that. Uh, so for every learner, uh, we have we cultivate authentic learners by taking a holistic approach to education, not a one-size-fits-all approach. We are invested in the success of all our students. We provide a rich, challenging, and fun learning environment for every scholar that emphasizes relevance as well as rigor. We want all our scholars to graduate as independent, thoughtful, and engaged critical thinkers and continue on as lifelong learners. And uh, under the concept of together, we are a rural school in a small community that is big on connections. And I, I think that's a good example of like, what makes us different and unique and special. Um, connections among families, students, teachers, administrators, and staff. This fosters an environment in which differences are appreciated and students feel included, supported, safe, and respected by peers and adults. And I'd just like to say, like, oh, with all of these, we we worked really hard on <laughs> a lot of the language and spent a long time talking very deliberately, not just the, the subcommittee, but the whole coalition about these, you know, what we wrote here and very specifically why we did it. Um, so I guess we have one more, which is world ready. Our, our scholars graduate having developed both the practical, intellectual, and social emotional skills to ask great questions, critically process information, form their own opinions, work in teams, communicate effectively, learn from failure, and adapt to a world of innovation and rapid transformation. And I, I guess I just wanted to point out, like, we, you know, we had these three terms we came up with or a tagline like a tagline but like we kept when we kept going back to what the surveys um, responses were they all fell under those three concepts very surprisingly neatly uh, so if someone say well what about this like well that's really under this concept of togetherness um, so uh, so again like we Put, even though it's very simplified, we thought both that that's that's can be strong to have a simple presentation or um, use of words, and then also it really does um, distill down to everything that we've been talking about, as well as hearing from the community. And I'm passing it on to Mission. Yes. 
Well, Marianne um, really laid the foundation for how we got to what you see on the screen. She actually took some of my notes, even though she didn't see them. No, no, it's fine. You did a great job. Um, and that's what I was going to um, just say that how we got to this and certainly the other components is really looking at those survey responses and what was common. What do people value in our school community from the student's perspective, the parent's perspective, and of course the folks who um, work here each day? Uh, extensive conversation, lots and lots of conversation about what, what, what should we do every single day to make sure we're working toward that vision. And I'll read that to you. Every day in our school district, we foster a relationship-based learning environment. By removing barriers, we provide equal opportunities for all students to participate in an education process that incorporates academic achievement with out-of-classroom interests, talents, passions, and activities. We educate the whole child to become critical thinkers, culturally and socially aware adults. It was really, really important that we focused on the relationship. Without those relationships, students aren't learning. Um, if they don't feel that an adult trusts, or that they can trust an adult, an adult cares about them, they're not going to learn as well. Um, the equal opportunities was very, very large for us as well. We want all students to feel like they belong here at Kanjahari and that um, they all have the opportunity to share those interests, talents, and passions. It's not about like the cookie cutter person. It's, it's we all bring something to the table. Um, and really this, this should um, really guide us in what we do every, every single day in our school and our school community. So, I feel like mine was easy because I think mine's easier. Yours is easier. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Kathy. She has the values. <laughs> um, on my committee with Ms. Ford and Mrs. Schraubrau, and we again took the surveys and just kind of found some commonalities in them as we went through them. Um, values, of course, are what we want the students to do every day, the teachers to do every day, the staff to do every day. And um, the values that we found running through all the surveys were creative thinking, empathy, compassion, and tolerance for others, cultural so of social awareness, healthy, positive relationships among our community of learners, perseverance and grit through engaging learning experiences. And you can see with everything, the relationships all really kind of tag right through there. And uh, I think that's one of the things that we really wanted to bring home. I told you mine was easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, pass on the oh, <laughs> Yes, I will post it right up tonight on to tonight's meeting. Um, so what's what's next? Well, we know that the board has some work to do in terms of the overall responsibility for crafting the vision, mission, and values. We would offer that a consideration might be to host a community event where this information can be shared and with some facilitated table conversations with people who would um, be there. Of course, it would include food and child care. Um, those discussions can happen and we can further refine understanding and definition of some of the concepts we've presented tonight. So that is our presentation. We would be happy, Mark, we're going to turn it back over to you for either some questions or facilitated conversation with the board and the folks who are here. So I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay. So thank you. I, I have some things to say about it. We're going to go back and sit down if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank the participants for doing this. I know that, you know, this was pretty quick to present, but I know how difficult this stuff is, especially when you're talking about just trying to hash out the language. So, um, thank you for your, your work. I was impressed with it. I like what I saw. Um, Scott? <clears throat> um, I gave a lot of feedback on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think there's some... <clears throat> I think there's some more refinement that we need to do a little bit. But, um, I like the direction that we're in. I think we need to make sure that all of the pieces are supporting each of the major concepts of the district that we're going to be putting out there. So I think 
in my own mind, I think there's probably a couple values that we need to still add. And so that's what I mean by tweaking. I think there's some tweaking to this still do. But I, I really like to get here where we've gotten. Well, I, um, I want to thank you very much for the work you've done. Um, so that's, you know, something that's very dear to me. And is very important. Um, and I'm also very impressed with how far it's progressed since the early, you know, the first few meetings that took place and what, what we were presented with last spring and, and what, what we see now is it's, you know, just light years ahead of where it was and much, much further along the road of where we want to be. Um, I agree that it, it, it's, you know, that now is a time that we need to start getting some feedback from our constituents, both in the community and in the school. I think in addition to community meetings, I think it would really be important to have meetings with students and teachers and staff in the school. Um, because I think if they don't get it, then we'll see we have some more work to do. Because I think you know, if this is going to guide our work, I think it has to be clear to people that read it what it's, t what the guidance is, and how it, it really uh, influences what they do every day. And so I think that'll be the next challenge to see if that's if what what people are hearing or reading when they when they read this. Um, and I think it, I think some things will. We'll, you know, we'll, I think probably we'll be surprised by some of the insights that we'll get, but I think that will be really important. Um, a couple of small things. Um, I, I, I said this before, also just for my own, you know, self. Um, I think for us as well, you know, on the board and, and administrators and so forth, you know, we really have to understand what does this mean if we accept this vision, mission, and values, what will it say that we should be doing, that we are not doing now? Or how should we be doing things differently? Um, because, you know, to, to put, I mean, all of these concepts are very um, worthy concepts and very, um, but I'm, I'm still in my own mind, and, I, and I, maybe it's just we need to have more discussion about it, you know, what will it mean concretely in terms of the work of our district, of, of engaging the students and, and, um, and, and get, getting them to where we want them to be based on this. And I think we really have to you know, really look at that because I think we've gotten very far along the road of you know, what we want. <coughs> now we have to figure out what does this mean. You know, and, and that I think is still, in my mind at least, needs to be further, you know, worked on. Just one small thing I, I uh, in, in, uh, here in the, um, the vision, um, world ready. Um, it was one thing that I thought was missing from it, and, and like, obviously it's my own, um, my own personal uh, bias, but. Um, it was adapting to the world, but not changing the world. And I think we want to have people who will engage in the world and change the world, make the world, uh, you know, interact with the world to make it better. You know, be like more of an active, not just, you know, make, uh, adapting you to it, but helping change it where it needs to be changed. And um, which gets to the whole concept which at some point we're going to be discussing, not tonight, but of um, the possibility of, for instance, a community engagement requirement for graduation is something that I would like to see us discuss at some point, you know, some point along the way. And I would like to see that in, in the visions, in the, you know, in the vision statement, vision mission value statement. Um, you know, that would kind of be saying that that's something that we Feels important. That's one of the values that I, we talked about Tuesday that I think probably needs to be added in. But 
but, but the bottom line is great work, guys, and thank you so much. I think we're really moving along, and and um, you know we have a little ways to go, but I, I think this has been great progress and very encouraging and exciting for me. I think we you know, we did talk about that about uh, like being civically engaged and I think that's the thing like these words uh, if you look carefully you'll find the answer to some of those and uh, in the mission and maybe we need to state it more explicitly or differently but in the mission concept we talk about educating the whole child to become among other things a socially aware adult and that was where we were thinking at Tuesday's meeting where that you know, ties into what you're saying as well. Well, and, and again, as I said, I think a lot of the answer to some of those questions or uh, issues would be what is the perception of those who, mm -hmm. and, and you know, what they hear when they, when they see it or hear it. And uh, I think that would be important for us, you know, in, in any further modifications that we might make. A specific reaction I had tonight that I didn't notice on Tuesday for some reason is the together piece seemed very student-centered rather than collective environment. And I'm not sure why I saw it that way tonight, but just to comment back. Which piece? The, the, the together statement on revision. It just struck me as very student versus the the collective environment. I'm not sure why. I just I didn't feel that way Tuesday and it struck me that way today. So I'd have to think about it more. I'm not sure why it struck me that way. Yeah, that's sort of an important component of, right. of the sort of feedback we receive from the community. So we wanna right. make sure that's in there. Um, any other questions, comments? Do you have anything you further you'd like to say to us? I, I just want to reiterate what you were saying. We talked about Tuesday um, that, you know, a, a lot of the things that we're saying here, we have to be prepared to follow through on and walk the walk. Uh, just talk the talk and you know that is truly the major work that lies ahead um, to give meaning to all the, the work we've done thus far so I, I think we do you do have to look carefully at sort of what's being said and are you willing to follow through on those commitments I think um, again from the conversation Tuesday we as a board probably in our retreat, we'll, we'll need to talk about well, what does that really mean and are we comfortable with what that could entail. Because we definitely talked about some of that on Tuesday. And just for your information, we're planning to discuss the vision, vision, mission, value uh, statements on, at our retreat we're having later this month. And so we will certainly, after that discussion, back in touch with you and give you more de in-depth feedback. Anything else? I think, uh, I think you said, Debbie, that I'm not positive, um, about uh, next step and a suggestion of public meeting. We talked about that on Tuesday. Um, <coughs> I think it would be good to maybe talk a little bit about how we feel as a board. I think it was in October, I don't remember the date. It was after it's the October last- October 23rd? After that the week, last open house week. is what they were thinking. And <clears throat> the concept was to use the open houses for each school as kind of the marketing um, of the actual event. So the event would be separate than the open house, which is a little bit different than where we were thinking earlier. But that seems to resonate, and we talked about maybe having a, a 
pasta dinner or something to you know, encourage people to come out to. Um, so those details were talked about Tuesday and wanted to at least make sure that kind of came back to the board so you kind of knew what they were thinking or talking about. And as well, um, as I said, I think it could be important to get together groupings of students and teachers as well, in addition to that uh, open house. Okay. Uh, okay, you see nothing else? Take it away, Debbie. Three quick things. This evening, um, we continue to interview candidates for the few remaining open personnel positions that we have. Um, it seems like um, we go on cycles where we either are doing a little bit of hiring or a lot of bit of hiring. This year is, is more than last year. Um, so we're preparing to implement our mentor program, which pairs our new staff with experienced teachers who will mentor them for the first year of their employment with us. And so we're currently, we've invited um, tenured teachers to apply to be mentors as part of a mentor program that the district has had in place for quite a while. We are also um, successfully made the transition to our new technology support service, which is the cooperative technology services offered through NARIC. Our summer tasks include preparing new computers for use, re-imaging computers, and updating software. Um, we are also have had a request from our secondary level teachers to establish Gmail accounts for students so they can use Google Classroom. So that's happening for grades six through 12 this summer. Um, we also are, believe it or not, school starts in just a few short weeks. And um, for opening day, we are finalizing our plans. We are absolutely thrilled, to use one of Stacy's terms, to have conscious discipline trainer Tom, Donna Porter and one of her students um, former students, DJ Batiste, to speak to our staff about the importance that we in schools can play in the lives of, of students. And more exciting, and, and as exciting, he will be here the following day to talk with the high school students during their opening day star activities. So that's really great, and his message is one that's quite powerful, and it's pretty much doesn't matter where you come from, but you can craft your own future and create your own space, or your own future. So. Um, we're really excited about that opportunity to think about relationships, which is really what the theme is of the opening day. So those are just a couple of quick things. Um, is, is that going to be Tuesday before school yes. starts? Like, yes, um, it'll be in the morning. So um, Mr. President, though, one thing is with a few remaining personnel positions, um, I'm requesting that the board come together quickly He's got some opportunities to um, consider the recommendations for the few remaining open positions that we had perhaps the last week of August. Well, at least three of us came around. <laughs> we kind of looked after all the interviews. We are, that's, um, what is it, freshman orientation? On the 30th, and then after um, freshman orientation, maybe if we could do an executive session at 7. Seven in the morning or no, and evening? No, evening. Okay. Does that work for people? That's Wednesday the 30th. Wednesday the 30th. Or if we could do a morning, I mean, if we had at least, that's up to. I'm unavailable in the morning, so I'm going to run that. Uh, right. 7 o'clock, I should be available. It'll be a quick meeting. I can't imagine it being long. No. Right, no, it'll, it'll just be exactly, you know, yeah. just the final it's just appointment. Just the Could you do it at 7 in the morning? On Wednesday, I can. I don't teach until the afternoon. Well, about noon on Wednesday. Okay, so, and you could do it at 7? No, no. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm right. sorry. I'm okay. having this understood. So it couldn't be much earlier than 7 p.m. for me. I could do it real early. At 4.35. Well, we could do like a 7.15. I mean, it doesn't have to be at 7. I mean, it's not going to last very long. It's just well, why don't we do it at 7.30 just so okay. to make sure you have time That's to get it. just the first week of school, so it's craziness, plus I have class, so. Is that what you mean? Daryl I can't do, you know, I guess it's 7.30. In the evening. In the morning or at night. Okay. It's okay. Right. Not Monday. All right, so why don't we aim for 7.30? Um, Wednesday the 30th. Okay. 
Two things that uh, seem obvious that we would want to do in the board retreat. Um, one would be a vision statement, and the other would be a self you know, reviewing the self-evaluation, um, seeing what we can glean from that. Um, so I, I hear people's thoughts, and if they want, if that sounds good, or do we want anything else added to it? Or in place of it, you know, the floor is open for thoughts and, and ideas. Uh, just my own thoughts. I always find value in getting legal counsel or legal advice, and sometimes this happens at board retreats or administrative type meetings where you invite, you know, whoever you're, you know, we've contracted with. Sometimes they'll give you an hour or they'll go over important briefs. I don't know if we do that as a board or if we get, if we have the opportunities to communicate or learn uh, from lawyers about what's significant, what's going on, uh, to keep ourselves out of hot water. I always find that generally in my professional development, those are probably the most useful. And whenever I talk to other administrators or board members, they tend to really like that a lot because you learn a lot about, you know, what your legal responsibilities are. So really, it's a two-fold fold question. I don't know if that's something that we've typically done as a board or if that's something that we would consider as a board. That's it. Thoughts? No, we've never done that. Well, I'll give you my own feelings about yeah. it. Um, the, the attorney that we work with is Chris Lanchant. Mm -hmm. um, she's very accessible. She's, she's been more than happy to come and consult with us at any time we want to have any questions for her, either by phone or in person. Um, I, I mean, if the majority wants to invite her, I, I would have no problem with that, but I don't really feel a, it's a strong necessity. Yeah, generally, they'll, they have a presentation of what's a, what are the hot issues, social media, transgender issues, things that will get us in hot water if we don't take care of it. So, um, yeah. however you want to do it, I'm open. I get the training generally, but uh, I don't know if you all do or if we are, you know, have the experience of what's going on in Canada Harry specifically, any legal issues or anything that, again, can keep us out of hot water and make sure that we're doing the, the right things for kids. And, staff and community? I, I would say um, in the world of business, I found those kind of things very helpful as well. We don't generally have to take home. You know, generally, it's just the, as Chris is saying, that the hot topics that they're seeing coming up and how should you deal with it appropriately. Um, and as we review policies, that's probably important. I know we get that input after we look at them, but it might be good for us to have insight into what policy should we potentially be paying close attention to. And so I don't know, maybe maybe our, I don't know as it needs to be done as a part of the board retreat, but um, maybe we could have that as uh, some presentation. I do think one thing we do need to talk about is in, in executive sessions our liabilities, and that might be a good time to do it with you know, the attorney giving us kind of a high level, here's what delay in the land is, is happening. Um, because of the board, the liabilities or something. That we need to do. So, 
that be a, an agreeable way to proceed and not to have it in the retreat, but to have it as part of an exec at some point? But, yeah, possibly, or, he, you know, like you were saying, it, it doesn't have to happen at the retreat, but maybe sometime in the future. It just depends. But executive session or uh, another board retreat next year or, you know, whatever the case may be. Typically, I know, like, uh, at Lake Placid, they'll probably have, you know, from NISBA, they'll probably have presentations. I have not the schedule, but typically, those are really good to go to. Okay, so um, are we happy with vision and self-evaluation? Yeah. I think so, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, we so only have uh, four hours, including eating dinner. <laughs> Okay, one other thing I just wanted to um, raise for people to think about, we don't have to make any decision on this tonight, is um, NISBA has a, a school board U where they do custom board retreats. And um, they do, um, they, they send someone and they can do it either for less than four, less than four hours, up to four hours or more than four hours. You do more than four hours, you can do more than one subject. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'll make copies of this for everyone to have a copy of, look at it, see if you think um, it's something that we might benefit from. Um, and um, if, you, if you do think it is, what they have to suggest some topics, although you can come up with your own. Um, for example, they say district goal setting, we'll move on to that. But uh, superintendent evaluations, roles and responsibilities, board members, team building, um, and uh, additional requested topics, school board performance evaluation, communication skills, trust and conflict resolution, legal issues, um, executive session and open meetings. So, law. Do so, they provide a facilitator as a part yeah. of that? As a board yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the thing that looks attractive to me about it is you get the benefit of school board experience all over the state. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it might be something that we might want to consider, but uh, I'll look at a copy maybe okay. of this and yep. everyone can look at it and we can discuss it at maybe the September meeting. I'd be in favor of it. I, 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 I think, think so too. I think it's helpful. Um, particularly when we're navigating, I, I really think the vision, mission, values is going to take a little bit of help for us to work through and understand the, you know, when we're, when we're agreeing to it and proposing that out to the to the district, what are the long-term implications of that? And I think it would be helpful for someone to help us at some point through that process. Or so. All right, so um, we'll, we'll discuss that in, in probably in September. And we'll see if you want to try to set it up. They're, they're booked pretty far ahead, so we'll, we'll probably do it later in the fall. Right, so the August 22nd date is off. No, it's on. It's on. Not for this, but... No, we're going to have our, our retreat on the 22nd to discuss our vision and... Um, oh, and then you're going to have gonna, right. do this separately? Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, all right. Oh, just um, one other thing I wanted to share with you. Before the board retreat, we're going to... Uh, tally all the self-evaluations um, so that you will have each of us will have a yeah how many yeses noes don't noes and also each of the essay questions will be listed separately with all the answers on, on you know consecutively yeah so that it'll, and you'll have that prior to the meeting so you can go through it and you know formulate some ideas okay all righty so uh, next is the curriculum committee. This is something that you know, you've been talking about, Scott. And yeah. um, I, I asked Debbie to see if she could find some examples of curriculum committees out there, because I thought it might help us to yeah. see what what they are and you know what some of the things that they do are and so forth. And so I guess we're in for discussion at this point. Yeah, I, I looked at the, the information. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> knowledge base of our um, how our curriculum is developed uh, here. I, my first 
personal opinion is some of these I think were more extensive than we would in our district. Um, the, the, the foundation of where I've been coming from is it's clearly one of the responsibilities of the board to be aware and approve curriculums in the district. Not that we're to be the curriculum experts, but we're supposed to be aware of what's what the instruction is and supportive of, yes, we agree that's, we support that direction for, for our district. And um, up to this point as a board member, we've never really discussed any of that. So it's clearly a missing gap in my mind. And I don't know what the, the reason I started the way I did is I don't know what the right time frames would be for our district, but it would seem like if we, had a curriculum discussion two or three times a year in the right time of the year from a calendar perspective, that would probably be enough. But I don't know what that would look like for our district. What do we do for curriculum mapping here? Atlas or what? Use Atlas, yeah. Just even a review of that, not that you're evaluating it, but just so you know what's being taught generally at what grade level, what, you know, what mm -hmm. month. Um, which it's just a curriculum map of what generally is being taught, or yeah. that's really what you taught. So maybe, maybe the most sensible place to start would be to ask Debbie to prepare a presentation for us on just on how the curriculum is formulated and um, what the time frame is, yeah. timeline is. There are some. There are some times. I'm sure there is. As yes. as we get ready to do right. course catalogs, yeah. there are opportunities there as teachers do work on um, looking at assessments or different projects. But there are some times of the year mm -hmm. that it lends itself more towards here's where things are developing, here's what's happening. Right. And not only the time, but the how is it developed? You know, where do the ideas come from and so forth? Mm -hmm. Just to give us a sense of how curricular ideas are mm -hmm. developed mm -hmm. and when. And then after that after that presentation, then I think we'd be better informed to how should we proceed. Yeah. So if I may ask, because I've started some charts, to calendar that with some of our, with a time frame. So you have your meetings that are the regular business meetings, could be a report there, could also be part of one of the second meetings, the informational meetings. Mm -hmm. The next one, the first one of which is um, September 28th, the one following, that's the informational, the one following that October 26th. So I would suggest that we calendar that now so things don't get lost in the mayhem and the shuffle. <coughs> All right, so would that be agreeable on the yep. second meeting in September? Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, that's September 28th. Okay, anything else on curriculum at this point? So, on to consents and approvals. Um, the, oh, consent approvals. Sorry. So we can do A through H as one. Would someone like to propose a consent agenda for A through H? We can talk about any individual one, but we'd be able to vote on all of them. Second. Any discussion? Do you want the discussion one by one or? see the vision and mission and values are for our district, we're going to be, need to be very cognizant of what that means with outside district students and what we're saying we will provide to them. Um, 
because I'm not sure that could be done for zero from the things we've been discussing uh -huh. in some of these meetings. So I don't think that's an issue for this year, but I just want to raise that so that we're, we've got our eyes open. Anything else? I had a question, which I don't expect you know, an answer exactly today, but roughly how much extra aid do we generally get for out-of-district students, whether if we can do it per student for, I don't know what aid that would be or you know, whether that's considered attendance, I, I just don't know. Yeah, you know, we, is we, that... We get aid for the student because they attend here, but Mrs. Schaefer would be able to provide that. Yeah, and I don't know if that's if it's broken down by student or per week, per month, per year. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm just kind of curious, that's all. We can have, we can have it when Mrs. Schaefer returns, we can have her do that. <clears throat> or we can track it for this past year, at least give you that number yeah, based on yeah. the number of students we have. Okay. okay. And I had, um, were you done no, or did you have any other questions? I had a couple questions, which is just really to, to help you learn and understand. I know there was, um, you know, the home, Healthcare aid or the nurse that's on the, the bus. I saw that it's. I know it's expensive. I know there's probably more than we can. Um, How? I just wasn't sure how long that was. Was that all day or was it just on the bus? Do you know offhand? Um, the the home health care services on the bus is for the bus. Yes, and that, but is it is that for just from point A to point B and then you're done? So we're mm -hmm. looking at maybe two hours then. Mm -hmm. is what we're looking at. Okay. But the person's on the bus coming home. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's so have we, I mean you probably have, it's probably easier just going with contracted service so you know it's reliable, you've got, you know, subs if whoever's not there, but have we looked at just hiring somebody? We did. Last year when this figure. child entered the district as yeah. a kindergartner, we actually interviewed people, we went through all of that process and then we looked at other options and in the end this became the best, most reliable, th okay. though it is expensive option for this particular um, student. I, I kind of figured that. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. You worked, you worked here then, so. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. And then I also know that we saw that there was an expansion of a bus route or an additional bus route. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, I know it's probably just because of the the way the kids are, um, you know, either more kids in a certain area or less kids and you're just kind of redistributing. Is there anything significant with that or, or no, just? It's the Ag P Tech added in. We have a few more Amish students that need transportation. Also, our district students who are in out of district placements. Okay. I didn't realize we were going to those. I thought no, that, that's in the next one. Oh, that's the next one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. When you started talking okay. about the tuition rates, I'm like, oh, I didn't know we were talking about that either. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was, no, tuition, that was my door, so I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. If you could have me back in, I would have been fine. Ahead of time. Yeah, thank you. I did have some things again I didn't expect to answer for, but it, and when I read through some of the um, bills, it made me ask a couple questions. And one was about cell phones, because it seems like we're paying a few different cell phone providers. So I'm assuming, and then the, the one that made it really trigger was we paid for somebody's phone to get fixed, a work phone. I don't yes. remember. So that made me go, oh. Um, I was just curious to make sure we had a specific policy around who's eligible for a cell phone, what the terms are for that, etc. And I'm, I'm not asking, I, I just want to make sure there's something in yes. place because I know from the labor side, there's been a lot of discussion around, well, if you have somebody on the end of a cell phone and you can call them any time, then that's an implication to what their status is. And so I just wanted to make sure that we had a formalized process around that. Mm -hmm. There is a board policy around cell phones. Okay. It may need to be reviewed. I would, it may be one of those we want to take a look at, okay. or the policy committee would want to take a look at again, just to make sure if there's different conversations happening now yeah. around employees with cell phones that our policy covers that. Okay. The other thing I was surprised about, and I'm sorry I didn't get this one to you guys in advance, so if we can just get an answer back. I wasn't, if, it wasn't clear why we were paying all the other school districts. 
Oh. 20 some thousands. Yep, yeah, that's chunk. easy. That's okay. the Ag P Tech grant. So we are the holders of ah, the Ag P Tech that's the grant, pastor. and that's the reimbursement. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. They were big, big bucks, and yeah. I was like, hmm. Mm, why is that? Yeah, happening? those yes. are those are not districts that we have <laughs> students coming from or anything. Um, if you okay. look at the that the top one of the clues for the future will be at the top of that warrant it's the federal fund warrant mm -hmm. so that tells you that those are our grants okay so when Got you it. see that then that's something that's coming from either the title grants the ag tech grant or the special ed grants which are the three we have okay. the last thing that i had as a question on this was i saw the fam tech surveillance mm -hmm. and i just wanted to know how they fit into this make sure all the components of the um, uh, video and all that stuff that we're talking about in the rest of the financial, uh, I forget what we're calling that, sorry, I'm having a mind blank, to make sure that we looked at what we already have and what those costs are and um, map that as a part of what we're planning and all of that. Actually, those are the new bus cameras for the new buses. Ah, uh, okay. All right, so that would be a piece, and is that integrated? Is that filmed on the camera, or it's, can people watch it? Or? Yes, people can watch it. I don't. I think they're DVRs on the buses because does it, it go wireless though? It so does not go wireless. It. it does not go wireless. Harold has to bring us something when we take a look at it. Okay. But those are the cameras for the new buses under the new buses. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a couple questions on the bills. On the July 28th, it's $4,000 to parking tax. Parking tax. Parking tax is our thing. Oh, I, I, I thought that, but I never. I don't remember ever seeing that before. Okay. And then um, also that same bill of Utica National Insurance for $100,000. What is that? That's our annual premium for all the insurance that we get from Utica National. What kind of insurance do we get from them? That's our property liability. I just want to make sure I have student the right student insurance. student insurance. Buses. Bus property. insurance. We have the property, vehicles, vehicles students, liability. Okay. Um, then moving on to uh, treasurer's report. This is something I'm just drawing a blank on. But what is the reciprocal account? Is that the account we did last year? Remember when we did that account last year? If I remembered, year? I wouldn't be asking. <laughs> <laughs> the board, General, the, no. it's a, the board. Yeah, you're going to use the payment. What page are you on? It's the fourth one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is, remember last year um, when the board chose to adopt a different account with MBT, I want to make sure I have it right, that to get more interest because mm -hmm. you will notice the way I always remember that it's the reciprocal account is that $24 is a lot more interest than some of the other accounts okay. that the district has. <laughs> okay, I just didn't remember that we that's call okay. it reciprocal account. I know. Okay. And when you said that, I was like, okay, there is a way I always remember, and that's how I always remember. Okay. Mainly because you, you in the past have, the math, shared, yes, have shared yeah. about the lack of interest yeah. in our accounts. Okay, also in the Treasury report, the general fund, um, there was one item that we received, M. Eagleston sponsorship. Yes. I was wondering what that was about. Um, you may have noticed that there are some signs. Um, coming into the high school, and there's a couple around the community about no texting and driving. Um, Michelle's graphic arts class last spring. Daniel, were you in that class no, last spring? Next, next, next year. year. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. They, um, she worked and got a grant from Jackson Associate to create those banners and a campaign. We have some things. Yes, for you. I, I, yes, okay. yes we, actually, we have some things for you that are a product of that campaign. So she received that award to produce the banners and produce the things we're going to give you. Okay. Um, school lunch. Okay. Um, we put fifty thousand dollars into that fund, and my question is, how did you do that? Um, I will have Mrs. Schaefer prepare a report for us on three one nine. Okay. I can't answer that. I can answer other questions. Okay. I can't. So I'll have Leah follow up with that. I didn't think we'd get an answer tonight. Right. 
And they're for yours to take. They're for us? Yes. yes. They're for you. These two? Yes. yes. So that is what the grant offered. And the students designed them. And again, if you come into the high school, and if you go by Betty Beaver's on the throughway, you'll see a big banner that was produced by the graphic arts class. Oh, yeah. Questions? Um, just a couple things for. Uh, maybe get back to us on. I didn't know about Santander. Santander. That's that's the leasing company for the buses. Oh, uh, which have a different company. Okay. And CPI. What does that stand for? Crisis prevention. Okay. And that's the training. I knew it wasn't the Crisis. CPI. I knew. That was a cold skill thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's crisis right. prevention Got it. intervention. Okay. Something like that. Perfect. That was it. Okay. Okay, so moved and seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, passes. Um, before we go on to the other um, approvals, um, I noticed there's something that was missing from the agenda, which I already noticed while I'm sitting here which is a report from yeah. you. Is there, is, is, is there just two things I guess I would like to <laughs> say. I would like because we asked you, we asked you that slide, so. You're but you go ahead. Sorry, I just want to let you know. If, if there's any questions or any comments that you'd like to make, please feel free to make them, number one. Number two, one of the things that we've talked about briefly is we're trying to figure out with your input if there's anything we can do to help you to be more effective in your role as student representative. And so you don't, again, have to answer that right now, but if you can think about that and come up with anything that we can do to, um, you know, to help you to be more effective and, and do your job the best possible, um, please let us know. It uh, definitely will. Uh, right now, I really don't have too much to say because uh, school hasn't started yet. All my friends are on vacation, and I haven't <laughs> seen anyone else in the school. Um, <laughs> So uh, I definitely will. I'll, I'll talk a lot more when um, I do get back to school and stuff. And um, yeah, I will definitely think about things that I could uh, you know, use from the board to uh, make me more effective. So are you the only one not going on vacation? Uh, pretty much. Uh, summer <laughs> dance has consumed my life right now. Yeah. Um, Recitals tomorrow, so then I'm oh, done. Oh, <laughs> good for you. You have a few weeks then. Yeah, a few weeks, and then right back to dance. So. Where is the recital? Uh, at the uh, volunteer fire department, actually, at, in the, uh, like, I don't know, at the upstairs area, I guess. Okay. Oh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it open for the, to the public? Yes, it is, uh, just by donation. Uh, what time? Uh, seven? Yeah, seven. Okay. And that's tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow night. Okay, so moving on to approvals. Non-resident tuition rate. Do I hear a motion I'll to approve a zero non-resident tuition rate? I would make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Discussion? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just had this thought. When I read the policy, we should relook at that one. We should put it on our list because I think the bullets that stated who should have it free didn't really address out of district. It was students of teachers and stuff like that. So we might just yeah, I know it's going to yeah. Sorry. It just made me think of it. Oh, it took me five years to know. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? I, I was going to say, I read that, but for some reason I thought that it, it was spelled out later on, but maybe not. I, I remember as I was reading it, I had the same yeah. thought that you did, and then as I, I, I think it's it, somewhere it like, else, but we're probably yeah, yeah, going to yeah. rework that yeah, a little yeah. bit. So Agreed. It's very Agreed. obvious. Yeah, if, if we caught that kind of right. perusing through it quickly. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Section zero. Um, the 2017-18 HFM BOCES base contract. Do I have a motion? contract, I know there's a lot of things we get from BOCES. What do we mean by that? It's all of the things that were included in our original in their commitment services. For, in their services. So this is, we should think about this as, this is the fixed services piece yes. for them, right? Okay. The amount is um, not always that static. For example, already, although this is the base contract, there's already going to be um, at least a little bit of a reduction from a special education aid and a special education student that were built into the original commitment form that won't be part of the build form. So this is just your really your starting point contract. So in the pieces that are strictly services, in other words, not population dependent, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, what did what did their increase wind up being? Have we looked at it that way? Um, Leah could probably give you that information, but it's going to be dependent on service. So, for, so for example, food service, which we contract right. with BOCES for, may have a different rate of increase than our technology services. So it really would depend on the cl cluster of services. Overall, this base contract is a um, is smaller than last year's. Is that because there's a lot of pieces in this, right? Is that because of their true base services, or is it because we don't have uh, something in there that? special needs student isn't there anymore or something Correct. like that. Correct. Well, th th actually, this is just the service piece, that price tends to remain, or that cost, very static. The okay. flexibility piece becomes if, um, for example, we don't have ENL services. We had them a year ago. We don't have them in this base contract because we're going to do it with our own staff. English as new language learners or second language learners. So that it's that kind of thing. Like every year we go through every single one of the services right. with a fine tooth comb and then make adjustments. If BOCES personnel change, perhaps we get a different person in a position that we use, their cost may be less. Right. So it's those kinds of things. Um, are there any other, I thank you for reminding us about the English uh, language one. Are there any other shifts of what we've taken over no. versus contracted out so no, that's the change we've made. Mm -hmm. And what is that um, cost wise to us? What it cost us from BOCES versus what is it costing us now? We're using existing personnel. So I don't know that there's any cost specifically because well, we shifted that yeah. person. We shifted the service. No, no, no. We shifted that teacher too. Correct, correct. So it, it is a cost. Yes, yes, yeah. So um, I'll have to go back and dig. I didn't bring yeah, the budget stuff with me. I'll, let's do that as a follow up. We can do that as yeah, a follow up. That would be fine. Okay. Because those are the right things to be looking at. And we decide did. whether we outsource right. stuff or bring it in based on what those cost changes are, are uh, becoming and what our usage becomes. Right. In some cases, our usage might go up and it makes it worthwhile for us to do it ourselves. Sometimes it's just a question of dependability as well. Right. Bus driver position. <coughs> On the 
expiration is under executive content. And we first let me have a motion. I second it. Okay. So I want to take a moment to read the explanation. The question I had was whether this also brings with it benefit obligations based on the personnel. The positions will be posted because that's how the positions work. However, in the bus garage, there is also a seniority way to look at the positions right. of infill that have been historic for years. That's the way it's gone. That's the way it's gone. That's the past practice for a long, 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 long time. If my memory serves me correctly, the person that would do this already receives benefits. So there is no benefit cost. I was looking at pages to make sure I had the right person in my head. <laughs> Right. Yes. I just wanted to make sure they weren't only looking at an hourly yep. piece and then there's this right. $10,000 right. thing right. going on. No, there is not. Okay, any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? We have a new two hour bus driver position. Okay, expand bus driver position. Do I have a motion? Somewhere in there, there's got to be, if they're only doing a three hour run, unless they're doing two hour run. No, it's a three. Okay. But at three, they're already getting benefits, is that what it is? Yes. Because right. of the step that they're on. Got it. Right. If yeah. past the sour. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, and I'm also assuming that it's in like an hour in the morning, hour afternoon, then that's, or hour and a half, rather, that's where you get three hours. Like this the per current one, but then with the addition of Victory Christian Academy and the, uh, some of the extra Amish that have moved in, so sure. it would be two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. Okay. But it's already passed the three hour threshold. Yes. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. No. Letter E. Bus routes and drivers. I'll second. Any questions or comments? The, the only question I had was is this, I don't know the bus routes from last year, <laughs> so is this relatively constant? Is it yes, yes, there are no yes, changes. There, there are no changes. Okay. There are no changes. That was, I, I didn't. <laughs> had a reference point. Right. And the only time they really do change is like if you have one family that lives on one of the roads and they graduate out right. and then he right. adjusts right. it. But typically they're this, then the same. Okay, anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? F, owner contractor agreement with SEI Group, that's the architectural firm doing the capital project. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Questions, comments? I, I, I can't remember, you, you had uh, like two or three, I think it was three architect firm. It was one of the three, I just can't yes. remember. Which one was it? Do you know like, S what was their? SEI, yeah, uh, they, did, the, they did the porticos over all the entrances. Yep, I know right one. Yeah, I knew that would be. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not doing those. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I knew which, which one you were talking about. Which one. I do have some information. Um, there was one piece. We had um, Gervin and Ferlazzo, Patrick Fitzgerald reviewing the contract. There was one piece in the contract that he has asked SEI for more information. We have not heard back as of this afternoon that they have had answered that question. So should we hold off on uh, I would, yes, I would recommend that we get the answer to the question. The answer is if the project went over 44 months, 
that they would be paid extra and there was a question about that so um, they recommend Pat I was waiting I was hoping to hear yeah. from Patrick that he had talked with them we have not received information as of this afternoon at five o'clock so um, I would suggest perhaps that we table it until maybe the end of the month like our when we do the personnel piece we could maybe bring All right. that Okay, you have a motion to table. Sure, yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so we'll table it till the 30th. And then we'll see who we're right there. Bus replacement reserve fund. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Questions, comments? I sent a question. I know we've covered this, but I couldn't remember how this worked. We tried to provide some additional information. Was it in there now? Yes, I'm yes. Sorry. It was in there on Tuesday, Leah and I met to go over everything. Okay. Um, I see that. I'm doing Yes, now. so please take a moment and then see how well we did with that. Thank you. I didn't go back and read the things I already read. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Based okay. on 1516, the expenditures are based on 1617, okay. and that's why your numbers are different. Yeah, that just didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> We're reimbursing something, but the numbers aren't the same. Okay, any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Home health care services agreement. I have a motion? Motion. I'll second. Is this the same vendor that we used? Yes. Because I made it, a, that, that one I made a document. Let me see if I there can. There it is. It just took a long time. Yeah, because I put okay. it in as a Word document, okay. not a. Um, and the scope didn't change either from the last time we no. it wasn't that long ago that we looked at this. No, it has not changed. Okay. And their service has been fine? Very reliable. Very reliable. Questions, comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Home health care services, substitute nursing services. Do I have a motion? Okay. I'll second. James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Questions, comments? Do we ever use uh, the service for just in house, what happens if our, we've got a, a <clears throat> coincidental thing where all of our nurses are out? That's our first route is to go, is that they go through HFM BOCES to see if, if through the subroute. If yeah. not, then we do contract right. with them so that we curious. have a nurse on premises. Yes. What, what, do you, what do we do for field trips? Do we send a nurse or anyone or just a little? No, we, we don't. All the right. buses have first aid kits. Right. Um, if it's a field trip where there is a student who would require medical attention, we do that. And right. we've done that before. Kind of figured that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the this is the substitute in our building. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. I got confused. Mm -hmm. I thought at the beginning you were asking about. I thought this was substitute for carrying on the bus. Oh no no. This is okay. that if our nurse yeah, never. That's what I thought when I read the first. Asking. Yeah. Okay. Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, motion carries. Next is the Home Health Care Business Associate Agreement. Aye. Motion. Motion. Second. This 
agreement just states that both parties will follow HIPAA rules when dealing with student medical issues or medical issues. Any questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And finally, the 2017-18 tax levy. The proposal is for 0% tax levy. Do I hear a motion? Motion. A second. Any questions or discussion? like to note that our expenditure rate is the to budget is the highest we've yeah, done we've, we've, we've been working on it um, but interestingly enough for the second year in a row our revenues came in higher and this happened this isn't a bad thing yeah, um, no, no. it's not except <laughs> that it does impact our fund balance and now that we have two years where revenues have come in higher than our strategy predicted um, Leah and I would recommend that the Finance Committee um, meet to really delve into this a little deeper and to really look at our revenue projection strategy. Did we get a mysterious check again? We did not. What we got was BOCES 8 that was different. And in the, uh, at the bottom of the sheet, we have some one-time revenues factors that came into play. So it was BOCES, it was a workers' comp payout for a case that we had open. And it got closed. And it got closed, so we got reimbursement for that. So you can see what those re those one-time revenue factors were. Okay. It's not a bad problem to have, but it's a problem no, that on the revenue side. Our strategy yeah, absolutely, on, on fund balance. balance. Yeah. <laughs> so we recommend the finance committee meet to really delve into this a little bit deeper, and we need to start thinking about our strategy for revenue projection. Are the auditors going to come in again like they yes. did last time? Yes. When is that? I can't remember. They're done. The auditors completed their preliminary work last week, so more towards the beginning of middle of September, they'll come in and give us a preliminary okay. report, the Finance Committee. That's last year, that's where Carol and I had the discussion with them about the strategy and how much money and that sort of stuff. So I'd suggest that we try to have that same conversation yes. again. So while we are very excited that our expenditures into budget are getting really tight and close, and that's something that Which is what we wanted the to board have. has been working on for a number of years, and we've been we've been working towards that for a number of years, um, we now need to address the revenue side in a different way with a different strategy. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay, zero tax. Can I have a motion to recess into executive session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a minute, though? Yeah. 